Hey everyone, quick announcement before the video. I've recently, for my streams, made the move to Twitch TV. It's twitch.tv slash amablissy underscore RNG. Uh, if you enjoyed my streams on YouTube, please consider checking me out there and dropping me a prime. Thanks guys, and enjoy the vid. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be explaining a tweet I made earlier this week, and if you're not following me on Twitter, you definitely should. A link in the description. But I said uh, earlier in the week that you should hide the stats of Pokemon that you soft reset for in uh, the third and fourth generations. Now, I think that you definitely should do that, but this video is going to be covering the easiest and pretty much most malicious way this could be used, which is to totally replicate a Pokemon. Um, you could, in its entirety, clone a Pokemon someone has either soft resetted for or RNG manipulated extremely easily if the person does not hide that information carefully. I don't ever hide my information carefully, so all of my guys could easily be cloned because I literally show you what the PID is. But for someone who kind of would be uh, care more about the individualism of the Pokemon that they have, uh, this could be kind of concerning. And this is not something that only applies to like dead battery or broken RNG. Like I, uh, I have been able to do this for someone who I watched soft reset for a live battery shiny that was level 50. And uh, I literally know exactly what their secret ID is, and they probably don't even know. And I know what frame Latias they got. So, <laughs> let, let's just say it's very easy to do this, and there are multiple videos of it on YouTube. I don't use it for anything like that, because I breed an RNG them all myself. But, actual warning, someone could easily clone your Pokemon and save file and stuff like that if they really wanted to. So, the only bits of info that you actually need to accomplish this are either a video or even just a method of how the person obtained their shiny so for example if you know that they soft reset for the shiny you actually already kind of know that it's going to be a low frame um, but a video is much easier to do it from in addition to that you're going to need poke finder right here which is in uh, below the tota dial and um, a basic understanding of how the rng works in gen 3. so i'm going to start the video of me actually um, going for the rng manip again this could be done to someone who and i have <laughs> to someone who uh, was not RNG manipulating, they were just soft resetting. Uh, so, I'm going to play the video and I'm going to explain stuff. So you'll see a timer going on in the lower left hand corner there. That's my frame counter. Uh, and basically, the RNG frames in the third generations go roughly at 160, uh, or at 60 frames per second. Which means every a frame occurs every 160th of a second, right? And... Be Oh, okay. Uh, and because of that, um, you kind of know how long or how many frames pass by watching a person um, do their R or do their sh uh, soft reset or um, RNG manip. So what you can do is you can take the frame. So you can take the time. So let's see. Oh. Uh, you can take the time they started their soft reset. So, 20 seconds, right? Then when do I encounter the Pokemon? So, the encounter starts when, like, the battle screen flashes. So, right here. So, it took me uh, pretty much... Well, I started at 20 seconds and 2 minutes, almost, like, on the dot. It took me to, um, to get this RNG minute. So, we can open Pokefinder to see what frame um, it is. And if it's stationary, you click that. If it's wild, you click that, etc. Okay, so we're in Poke Finder and we need to find like something around two minutes. So let's just leave it, uh, all the defaults and hit generate. And Poke Finder has a very convenient how much time would have elapsed here. So let's get to around two minutes. It was pretty much two minutes on the dot. All right, let's see. And so I'm using Emerald, so you would put, so right now the seed box here doesn't matter. Um, and it Ruby and Sapphire, it never really matters, but you, you'll see what I'm talking about more as I go. So I hit around frame 7200. You just need a rough generalization, and again, I'll explain why. So, okay, I know I hit around frame 7200. That's good to know. Take that down for later. Let's finish the video until I get to the stats. So we'll skip the parts of me catching it, blah, 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 blah. Blah. So let's get to the stats and the nature. The nature is also very important. All right, so it's a bold nature, and here are all the stats. So 
what we can do now is open a stack calculator, which again, Pokebinder very conveniently has. So here's the IV calculator of Pokebinder. So we go open it and we'll just type in the Pokemon, Groudon, Bold, Gen 3. I don't even need to put the characteristics or hidden power in. You type the level. Now this is why level matters, right? If it's a Pokemon that's like level 10 or something, it's you're really not going to be able to easily find it. But level 50 plus, uh, which a lot of the legendaries are, even the Ruby Sapphire cover legends, which are like, what, 40 or 45, is it's completely doable for this. So I'll type in all the stats here. So 234, 198, uh, 238, 147, 147, 142, and I'll click Find IVs. And so it finds a nice range of IVs here. Uh, that the Groudon could be. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these IVs and we're going to plug them into Pokefinder itself. So let's do that. So, in Pokefinder we go to this section called Searcher. Now, if you're doing it in Emerald version, which has a broken seed, and someone really wouldn't be soft resetting an Emerald, they'd probably be running away, but still, uh, you don't actually have to really change this. Uh, you can just do the search here and extend the max results box, but I'll show you the easiest way. So, um, you go here and you click method one, leave it there, blah, 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 leave trainer ID, secret ID blank, and you type in the IVs this could be. Now, again, this will totally work for Ruby and Sapphire, even if their battery isn't dead, uh, which is like very scary. Uh, and if they're doing runaways and Emerald, uh, for the Pokemon, uh, if they have, um, if they have streamed footage of them doing literally every single, uh, literally the whole attempt and they're not using battle videos, um, you could also deduce it that way because you would still be very vaguely be able to calculate exactly how many frames have passed. All right, so we search. Oh, I forgot to do nature. Uh, ignore these. They're not actually shiny. Uh, and the nature is bold. So as you can see, this is why it's so scary, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only 12 bold natured spreads with this possible stat combination from the IV calculator, as you can see, uh, 234, 198, 238, 147, 147, 142, there's only 12 Groudons like that, that exist in all of third generation, okay? Or uh, 12 bold uh, spreads with this IVs. In the entirety of stationary Pokemon for all of third generation, only 12 Pokemon have this possible nature plus stat combination, okay? 12, that's nothing. And then to narrow it down even further, uh, and this is probably where it gets hard for Fire Red Leaf Green. Um, and again, method one is a method in Gen 4. So this can happen in Gen 4, right? Um, now, so this is where it gets hard for Fire Red Leaf Green because knowing which seed you're going to hit, um, it's much less likely they'd be able to figure out what seed you hit. But Ruby and Sapphire, uh, their seeding is time based, and Emerald Seed is very broken. So it's very easy to deduce what's going to go on from here. So what we next do is open up a thing in Pokefinder called Seed to Time. So I'm going to do that right now. It's, I'm in the main window. Okay. So let's fix that real quick. Open in OBS. So seed to time just popped up in OBS. All we're doing here is we're going to copy the seed and we're going to paste it here. And it'll tell you, this is probably it. <laughs> uh, so it'll tell you what frame that Pokemon can occur on. And no matter if you change the year, these are all going to be, oh, right, because I changed it right. No matter if you change the year, these are all going to be the same exact frame, no matter what you do, right? You have to just make sure it's like this. So you will be able to see what frame this spread occurs on. And this is aiming for the soonest. Um, that's what 16 uh, to 32 bit seed to time is looking for. It's trying to see what the shortest possible frame this is available on. Um, so again, if I, I did like this, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, so what you're going to do is kind of copy all of these seeds and see if any of them are around our estimated value of 7,200. So this is not it, right? This is not it. And so again, if you saw someone soft resetting on Ruby Sapphire live battery, you would know 
that the frame they hit the Pokemon is probably anywhere from... Hello? It's not copying. Uh, would probably be anywhere from like four to 500 or something. Uh, maybe even six or 700, depending on the Pokemon. And you'd be able to tell exactly what frame they hit because their spread is not that common. No spread is that common, really, at the end of the day. Um, so 8,370. That seems close. Only 1,000 off, right? But actually, when you look at it, 8,370 is a whole 20 seconds off. So it maybe could have been, maybe could have been, but really, 20 seconds is a long time. And we didn't even, like, our timing was pretty accurate. Um, okay, uh, let's go back to the searcher. So we have two potential candidates, although the one that's closer is probably it, right? All these other ones have been in the tens of thousands, which is like 20 minutes of waiting time, right? So here you go. We have two candidates. We have the first one that we checked, right? And we have, uh, I don't even remember what the other one was. This one. These are the only two possible ones that this, uh, this Groudon could be. That's just it. That's the end of story. That's it. Okay, so how do we tell between the two? Well, one, the timing is pretty much enough for me. Um, especially if you have video footage, it's completely enough. You, there's no way for them to, to prevent that. Um, the other way is if they did it on Emerald, you can just search for it on Emerald. Um, 7173 is like right here. Uh, oh, it's probably a little bit off. Yeah, it's 7174. For some reason, there's a. I'm using an older version of PokeFinder, so there's a, like a bug where there's a one frame difference where this thing says 7173. Right? But this is actually 7174 generator. Generator's just a little bit bugged. I wouldn't worry about it. But, um, yeah, there's a few ways to know. Uh, so in Emerald, you could just leave the seed blank here. Um, in Ruby and Sapphire, eh, you just have to guess which one's closer. Um, but even then, 20 seconds. No, a thousand frames, you know which one's better. You know the one that's only 20 frames off, not even one second of our very rough estimate timing, by the way. Okay, so how can they be even more malicious with this, right? So, if we go into PokeFinder's main window again, and we open the uh, uh, IV to PID section. Sorry, we'll show that now. Right? What they can do is type the nature in um, they can type the trainer ID and all of the exact stats in so trainer ID of my emerald is 2886 right HP so we would type in the stats that the stat calculate or that the um, that these two frames would have told us right The one would be 20 HP, 8 defense, 3 special attack, 24 special defense. Oh no. Oops, I've done it wrong. 28, 23, 3, 24, and 16. Bang. It will tell you what the spread is, what the seed is. And you know their trainer ID and your secret ID. And for some proof here, you can see that the uh, it will tell you the um, trainer ID and secret ID of um, the thing. And I can confirm that this is my secret ID in my Emerald version. So you can clone this crowd on all you want if you want, guys. Uh -huh. The secret ID sometimes can be a digit or two off. But the thing is... Even if the secret ID is a digit or two off, it doesn't actually end up mattering because all of the spreads that would be shiny uh, will still be shiny because of the way the, the XOR and stuff works like that. There's like a small, small range. Um, so even if they don't have your 100% identical secret ID, um, it's like, it's going to be close enough. Uh, but even then, this one got it, so... Um, and yeah, and that's how to be malicious 
uh, just by watching a video. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be like too mean about this or whatever, but um, there are videos you could watch right now and do this to people right now. You could literally do this to people right now um, because they have their whole encounters up and I think that people should probably stop doing these encounters. <laughs> um, and again, if you wanted to do it, and so the, the problem in some of the other games is like Fire Red and Leaf Green, um, the seeding isn't timing based and it's not a static seed. It's like CPU clock based. You could probably end up narrowing it down to like the 13 or so spreads. Um, and then from the 13 or so spreads, um, you could just, you would have to try and figure out like what seeds they possibly could be hitting or something like that. It'd be very, very difficult. But even then they, they have a range of 10 different ones that they could check. Um, and if you have multiple shinies on video like that, you could compile a like cross compilation of trainer IDs that would make all of those uh, shiny frames shiny and uh, you're still screwed. So <laughs> I would be very careful about that type of thing. Um, I hope this was informative. Thanks for watching. Don't be scared. Uh, if, especially if you don't care if people clone your Pokemon, but yeah. Oh, and then if you wanted to basically clone it, I could either, um, right now, what I could either have do, done is I could make a Gen 4 save file very easily or a Coliseum or XD save file with this trainer ID and secret ID combo super duper easily. Uh, or even a Gen 3 game if you're patient enough. Um, and then you could easily catch the Pokemon there or replicate that trainer ID, uh, stuff like that. So like I could, I could actually 100% identically, it would be, it would be identical to replicate this Groudon in, um, in, uh, gen four. I could do it with the same trainer ID, secret ID and, uh, PID IV combo. I could do that. It'd be a clone. Uh, I could trade the original Groud up to that save file and it would, um, it would obey me because it would think I'm the OT. So yeah, uh, that's it. Hope this was informative. Uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye.